हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर नंद कुमार रावबावले फ्रॉम कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग अंबाजोगे इज गोइंग टू डील विथ फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स सो इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू सेंट्रिफिकल पंप दैन पार्ट्स ऑफ सेंट्रिफिकल पंप टाइप्स ऑफ इम्पेलर टाइप्स ऑफ केसिंग्स एंड सक्शन पाइप डिलीवरी पाइप हेड्स ऑफ सक्शन सच एज सक्शन हेड डिलीवरी हेड स्टैटिक हेड एंड प्राइमिंग नीड ऑफ प्राइमिंग so today we are going to discuss about work done by centrifugal pump and manometric head as well as we will discuss about the efficiencies of centrifugal pump so now what is this uh, work done by centrifugal pump on water so work is done by impeller on water so this work which is done by impeller on water in order to lift this water is uh, obtained by the velocity triangles so velocity triangles are drawn with the help of the uh, venn diagram as well as the various triangles as shown in the figure so now we can find here this is the outer circle and this is the inner circle we have diameter d1 for inner circle and diameter d2 for outer circle so now we see here this is the vein so when the water enters from its eye at the inlet so at velocity v1 so this uh, velocity v1 is perpendicular to the tangent drawn at inlet of vein so this is at 90 degree angle so now <coughs> so this v1 is the absolute velocity at inlet and vr1 is a relative velocity whereas u1 is the velocity of vein or uh, impeller at inlet so this is the linear velocity of impeller at inlet is u1 so this relative velocity makes angle theta with u1 so now uh, when this water glides over this vein and when it comes out so this water is uh, moving away from this uh, vein at a velocity v2 v2 is the absolute velocity at outlet and whereas vr2 is the uh, relative velocity at the outlet and u2 is the velocity of impeller at the outlet of vein and vw2 is <coughs> velocity of wheel so these are the velocities which are defined uh, in this uh, velocity triangle so this helps us to find out the work done now uh, we see here the water enters radially so water at the inlet enters in radial direction at velocity v1 and then the absolute velocity uh, this v1 makes angle 90 degree uh, with the uh, tangential direction or tangential velocity at the inlet of impeller whereas alpha this angle alpha is 90 degree and the velocity of whirl at the inlet vw1 is going to be zero here so now uh, coming to this uh, what are the parameters in this velocity diagram so n be the uh, uh, speed of impeller in the revolutions per minute rpm whereas d1 is the diameter of impeller at inlet so for example this is the impeller so it has got i and this is the outer periphery of impeller so d1 is the diameter at the inlet so this diameter is d1 then e1 is the tangential velocity at the uh, inlet of impeller and which is given by pi d1 n divided by 60 where n is the rpm and d1 is the diameter at inlet or this inner eye diameter we can say <coughs> so now v1 is the absolute velocity of water at the inlet of impeller and vr1 is the relative velocity relative velocity is nothing but the it is difference between uh, the velocity of impeller and absolute velocity of water so the difference between uh, the velocities is a relative velocity <coughs> then alpha is the angle made by absolute velocity v1 at the inlet with the direction of motion of vein and theta is the angle made by a relative velocity at the inlet with the direction of motion of vein so now similarly v2 is the absolute velocity of water at the outlet whereas d2 is the diameter of uh, impeller at the outlet u2 is the velocity of vein at the outlet whereas vr2 is the relative velocity at outlet and beta is the angle made by absolute velocity v2 at the outlet with the direction of motion of vein and phi is nothing but <coughs> uh, angle Uh, made by relative velocity at the outlet with the direction of motion of 
weight so these are corresponding values at the outlet and uh, these values uh, which are d1 u1 v1 vr1 alpha theta are the values at inlet now coming to this uh, this uh, work done by centrifugal pump so this work done by centrifugal pump uh, is nothing but the similar to the work done by turbine so this uh, centrifugal pump is <coughs> reverse of radially inward flow reaction turbine so the work done by uh, this uh, radially inward flow reaction turbine that is given and according to that <coughs> the work done on the runner of runner per second per unit weight in case of turbine work done by the turbine or by water in case of turbine work is done by water water on the runner per second per unit weight of water striking with when per second <coughs> is given by this equation 1 over g into pw1 minus into u1 minus of vw2 u2 so we call this as equation number 7 so this is the work done on the runner by water so a reverse of this the centrifugal pump is power consuming machine whereas the turbine is power producing machine so power consumed by uh, centrifugal pump is reverse of this that means it is negative to work done by turbine so work done on water now water in centrifugal pump is negative of work done by water on the runner of turbine so negative work means minus 1 over g vw1 into u1 minus of vw2 u2 so if we multiply this minus inside this bracket it will be 1 over g <coughs> vw2 u2 minus of vw1 u1 so here what we say alpha is equal to 90 degree therefore vw1 is going to be zero so this second term is going to be zero and this work done on the water in a centrifugal pump is given by vw2 u2 divided by g so this is nothing but the work done <coughs> now work done by impeller on water per second is uh, given by this uh, equation now uh, what we say is if the amount of water so if weight of water is known to us then the work done in per second work done by impeller on water per second so we can obtain by multiplying this work done on water in a centrifugal pump per kg or per unit weight of water so this is per unit weight of water work done per unit weight of water per second so if we want to find out work done per second just we need to multiply it by weight so therefore work done by impeller on 
on water per second is nothing but weight into V W two U two divided by G. So now <coughs> we can uh, say this as equation number two. So this gives us work done by impeller on water per second. So this was the work done by impeller on water per unit weight of water per second. So we have multiplied it by weight. So therefore this weight will disappear. Now we can have one more equation that is weight of water. Weight of water is nothing but mass density of water into acceleration due to gravity into discharge q so this gives us the amount of weight of water which is taken by this centrifugal pump if we know discharge that is in meter cube per second so if you multiply this discharge with density and acceleration due to gravity we can find out weight in newton per second so weight of water lifted in uh, newton per second now we can say that the q is a discharge discharge through the pump or centrifugal pump through the pump q if we say it is a q which is equal to area into velocity so q is equal to av that is according to continuity equation so area is given by pi d1 into b1 and velocity is nothing but velocity of flow we can call this as velocity of flow that is v f1 so how we obtain this pi d1 b1 so <coughs> say for example this is inlet of impeller and this is outlet of impeller so let us assume that this is the diameter d d1 so circumference of this inlet is pi d1 pi d1 and yesterday i have explained that the depth of a vein so this is say for example vein so this depth of vein we call as a b that is b1 so cross-sectional area area between two veins so this is the cross-sectional area so this cross-sectional area or gap between the two veins is uh, nothing but b1 is the depth and this total uh, circumference if we measure that is pi d1 into b1 gives us area into velocity of flow that is vf1 so similarly uh, we can call this as pi <coughs> d2 then b2 vf2 at outlet so pi d1 b1 vf1 is the discharge at inlet and that discharge is equal to discharge at outlet of impeller where b1 and b2 where b1 and b2 is nothing but the width we call but actually it is a depth of <coughs> vein so these are going to be same so this is not going to change so b1 and b2 are the inlet and out uh, width of impeller at inlet and outlet so actually this is depth of vein to which extent it is extended above the plate say this is the plate over this plate this vein is created so this vein which is above this uh, <coughs> plate so this depth of vein is known as b1 so here it is referred as a uh, depth so this is about work done by a centrifugal pump on water so in previous slide we have discussed about work done uh, in uh, kg sorry work done uh, in newton per second or this is we call as a in watt or watt equation number two gives us the work done in watt now <coughs> coming to the manometric head so this manometric head is uh, nothing but the head against which a centrifugal pump has to work so when a centrifugal pump is going to lift water from the sump to the delivery position <coughs> so this distance 
against which this pump has to work as well as this pump has to work against the losses in the suction pipe as well as in the delivery pipe frictional losses then it has to work against suction head then it has to work with the delivery head so this pump has to work against all these parameters so that is known as the manometric head so this manometric head is uh, generally denote, denoted by hm so now this manometric head hm <coughs> is nothing but head imparted by impeller to the water it is head imparted by the impeller to the water so for example some head is imparted that is 10 meters of water column so out of that some losses are going to occur that may be frictional loss in the suction pipe frictional loss in the delivery pipe so all losses are uh, lost due to the sudden bend sudden expansion whatsoever is the loss so that loss if we subtract so loss of head in the pump loss of head in the pump so there may be a loss of head in the pump itself because of friction so these uh, losses of head in the pump are very very minor so what we see is head imparted by the impeller to water is uh, just nothing but uh, just we have obtained work done that is v w 2 u 2 divided by g minus of loss of head loss of head in pump so now this loss is neglected therefore head or manometric head is equal to v w 2 u2 divided by g so this is uh, the manometric head so in other terms the manometric head hm manometric head is also given as total head at outlet of pump minus total head at inlet of pump so total head at outlet of <coughs> pump minus total head at inlet of pump inlet of pump so according to the Bernoulli's equation we can write head at outlet P naught divided by rho g plus of P naught square pressure head kinetic head and data bed divided by 2g plus of z0 minus of pi divided by rho g pressure head at inlet plus of pi square divided by 2g plus of zi so now we can see here what this is p uh, total head manometric head is given by uh, these uh, two terms that is uh, total head at outlet of pump minus total head at inlet of pump so therefore what these terms are that we see here so this p naught divided by rho g is nothing but a pressure head at outlet pressure head at outlet of the pump and that is nothing but hd uh, delivery head we call in short then v naught square divided by 2g is nothing but velocity head at outlet of pump and this is nothing but velocity head at delivery is nothing but vd square divided by 2g so vd is the velocity uh, delivery velocity uh, of a, a water which is coming out of the centrifugal pump and z0 or zo is nothing but vertical height of outlet of the pump from datum line 
so it is a delivery head we can call or a vertical height vertical height of the outlet of the outlet from datum line and similarly we can uh, say this as what is pi divided by rho g then vi square divided by 2g and zi so these are corresponding values of velocity head then datum head and then pressure head at the inlet so what we can write this as uh, this panometric head hm is nothing but it is the sum of suction head plus delivery head then plus of head loss due to friction in the suction pipe then head loss due to friction in the delivery pipe and the kinetic head kinetic energy head at delivery v square divided by 2g so total amount of head which the pump has to work against so pump has to overcome the head in the suction pipe head in the delivery pipe and head loss due to friction in the suction pipe head loss due to friction in the delivery pipe and finally this pump has to deliver some amount of velocity to the water which is moving out of this pump so all these heads all together are known as the manometric head so now uh, coming to this next slide we can see uh, what happens in this uh, centrifugal pump so power transmission takes place so generally power is given to the centrifugal pump with the help of a electrical motor or electric motor or a internal combustion engine or any turbine steam turbine or so anything so then uh, the power is uh, supplied with the help of motor or electric motor to the shaft and that shaft is connected shaft of <coughs> motor is connected to the uh, centrifugal pump or impeller so then uh, the power moves from electrical motor to shaft then shaft to the impeller and from impeller to the water so what happens uh, during the transmission so there is an efficiency of electric motor so 100 percent electrical energy which we supply so out of that some uh, electrical losses are going to take and then say for example 99 percent of energy is given to the shaft so then shaft imparts its energy to the impeller so some uh, loss will occur here and it may be say 80 percent energy is given to the impeller and from this impeller again some losses are going to occur and say for example 70 percent energy is given to the water so here uh, the losses are going to occur and depending on this loss the efficiency of a centrifugal pump is defined so the uh, efficiencies of centrifugal pump are given in a different ways so the power which is supplied from a motor to the water is going to decrease step by step from uh, shaft from shaft shaft to impeller then from impeller to water so the there is a reduction in the energy or head or power from shaft to impeller and from impeller to water so the efficiencies of centrifugal pump are defined as first efficiency is manometric efficiency then mechanical efficiency and overall efficiency let us see what these efficiencies are so now uh, this manometric efficiency is uh, nothing but the ratio of manometric head to the head imparted by impeller to the water is known as a manometric efficiency so manometric efficiency is defined as head or uh, the ratio of manometric head to head imparted by impeller so here we can say it as manometric head to the head imparted by impeller to the water so now <coughs> we can say the power given to water at the outlet of pump so if we see this power given so manometric head is nothing but power given to the water 
at the outlet of pump so what we can see is here power given to the water at outlet of pump at outlet of pump which is given by W into HM divided by 1000 so uh, this uh, manometric head into weight so this is nothing but the work done and this work done is obtained in kilo uh, sorry watt so dividing it by 1000 we get it in kilowatt so this is uh, one so this is nothing but manometric head which is imparted at the outlet so now head imparted at inlet of <coughs> this uh, in, uh, head imparted by impeller to the water at inlet is given by total power at the impeller at the impeller uh, that is equal to <coughs> work done by impeller per second per second divided by 1000 then we get it in kilowatt so this work done by impeller is given by equation number uh, one or two we see here so we have seen here this is the work done sorry here it is the work done uh, by impeller in watt that is w divided by g v w to u2 so this equation gives us work done in newton per second or in watt you can see here so this is given by w by g v w2 u2 divided by 1000 kilowatt so now this is uh, say for example equation b and this is equation a so now we can uh, find out manometric efficiency power input uh, power given to water at outlet of pump is nothing but whm divided by 1000 kilowatt so this is manometric head in terms of kilowatt so that is w hm divided by 1000 whole divided by w divided by g vw2 u2 divided by 1000 so cancelling this 1000 this 1000 ww we cancel so what we get is g into hm divided by vw2 u2 so this is the manometric efficiency of a pump so this equation c gives us manometric efficiency now coming to this mechanical efficiency so this mechanical efficiency is nothing but the ratio of power at the impeller to the power at the shaft so what happens here uh, mechanical efficiency or mechanical losses are going to happen and these losses are uh, going to reduce the shaft power supply uh, from shaft to the impeller so therefore this is known as a uh, mechanical efficiency the power at the shaft of a centrifugal pump is more than the power available at the impeller of a pump therefore the ratio of power available at the impeller to the power at the shaft of centrifugal pump is known as a mechanical efficiency and this mechanical efficiency is given by power at the impeller divided by power at the shaft So therefore 
what we can say is the power at the impeller is nothing but work done that we have uh, obtained uh, just now in the previous slide <coughs> this is the power at the impeller or total power at the impeller by equation b so this uh, we can keep in the numerator so v w divided by g into v w2 u2 divided by 1000 divided by shaft power sp shaft power this is uh, nothing but the mechanical efficiency now uh, coming to this overall efficiency so what this overall efficiency it is uh, nothing but the ratio of power of power output of pump to the power input of a pump so what is power output is nothing but a manometric head which is imparted so the overall efficiency is given by the weight of water lifted uh, sorry it is uh, given by the ratio of uh, what you say power at the output that is manometric head or uh, the ratio of power output of pump power output of pump to the power input that is shaft power so power output is uh, known to us that is manometric head which is obtained w divided w into hm divided by 1000 and divided by shaft power is sp or shaft power we can say so this is overall efficiency this overall efficiency is product of uh, mechanical efficiency uh, and manometric efficiency efficiency manometric efficiency and mechanical efficiency is nothing but the overall efficiency of a pump so in this way we have discussed about the various efficiencies of a pump and uh, here we stop with this uh, and in next class we'll see few more numericals uh, and depending on the centrifugal pump and how to get various terms that is v1 v2 u1 u2 then uh, relative velocity 1 relative velocity 2 concerned to the velocity diagram of a centrifugal pump so that we see in the next class so today we stop here thank you